There we go. There we go. Good morning, church. Y'all are a rowdy bunch today. It is good to see you every Sunday, especially on a baptism Sunday. It is a great celebration to be in worship together. Welcome to First United Methodist Church, especially if this is your first time or first time in a long time. My name is Brad Corbin. I'm one of the pastors here, and I'm proud to welcome you into this space. We always like to give thanks for our flowers placed in the sanctuary, given to the glory of God and in honor of Jerry and Lanier Thompson for their 47th wedding anniversary. Happy anniversary to the Thompsons. We, we always like to ask you to register your attendance in the pew pads that are at the end of your pews and then pass those on down so that everybody may register their, uh, their attendance. As I said, we are celebrating a baptism today. Miss Grace Appling McMillan will be baptized after the sermon. She's the daughter of Victor and Stuart, and she has two brothers, Henry and Jack, her mater maternal grandparents. Her part of our congregation, David and Sean Prevard, and her paternal grandparents, Vic and Melissa McMillan, live in Thomasville, Georgia. We'll have a mission moment today, uh, later in the service. Tuesday is our clergy move day. This is my last uh, time serving as your last Sunday serving as your associate pastor. Uh, so we'll have a moment during the service where we have the official farewell litany and we'll have a welcoming litany in a couple weeks for Reed and Carrie Sue, Michaela, my good friends and great pastors. If you were on the administrative council, come on Tuesday night to, uh, to their regular meeting. And then next Sunday is such a special Sunday, Laity Sunday, a fifth Sunday in the church, and the bishop has directed churches for that to be a Laity Sunday in which the pastors step back and laity step forward into the spotlight. And so uh, in worship preaching, we will have Grace Clark in both our sanctuary services and Tom Wicker in our uh, invitation worship service. I will be watching online, Grace. So I've, I've, um, I am very, very excited for, uh, that y'all will get to hear the word from these two lovely folks. And then if you are a youth or have a youth, we had to cancel our confirmation water slide party back in May because of weather. So all the youth are going to use the water slide this coming Thursday. So that's the 27th. So be on the lookout for that. A couple of other announcements there that you can read for yourself. Just as I have welcomed you into this place, I want you to welcome one another into this place and especially introduce yourself to somebody you don't know and welcome any children in your midst and uh, welcome little Grace's family as well. They've come from far and wide to celebrate this special day with her. Let's stand and welcome one another.
How very good and pleasant it is when sisters and brothers live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, like the dew that falls on the mountains of Zion. Together, let us worship God. Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Holy God, you created the world and all that is in it. The wind and the sea obey your Son. You are the source of our strength, and our confidence is in you. All praise be to you, our stronghold and Savior. Amen. Amen.
You may be seated. Let us pray. God of eternity, by the power of your spirit, speak your word to us this day, that hearing we may know your truth and live ever more faithfully for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Tell among the peoples God's deeds. The Lord who avenges blood is mindful of them and does not forget the cry of the afflicted. Be gracious to me, O Lord. See what I suffer from those who hate me. You are the one who lifts me up from the gates of death, that I may recount all your praises. And in the gates of the daughter of Zion, rejoice in your deliverance. The nations have sunk in the pit which they made. Their own foot has been caught in the net which they hid. The Lord is made known. The Lord has executed judgment. The wicked are snared in the work of their own hands. The wicked shall depart to Sheol, all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not mortals prevail. Let the nations be judged before you. Put them in fear, O Lord. Let the nations know that they are mortal. Here now the first lesson that comes to us, Paul's words to the church at Corinth, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have, it, we have commended ourselves in every way. Through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restrictions 
in our affection, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning is taken from Mark chapter 4 beginning in verse 35 on that day when evening had come Jesus said to them let us go across to the other side and leaving the crowd behind they took him with them in the boat just as he was other boats were also with them a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. And so they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Jesus woke up, and he rebuked the wind. And he said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. Jesus said to them, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe. And they said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. pray with me. Our most holy God, God be with us the next few minutes and may, may my words God be yours. And God if they're not of you, may they be swept away like sand in the wind. Amen. Years ago I was in my sixth year of college for my bachelor's degree. I had changed schools a couple of times, I had changed majors a couple of times, and I had played a lot of the time. 
So I didn't finish in four years. In the spring of my sixth year, my daddy called me and asked me when I thought I would graduate. And I asked him why. And he said, well, you need to get out of school and get a job. And I told him that I was not raised to work. I thought I was there really to, until I got a husband. This is the same daddy that asked my doctor after I had my first child by a C-section because that baby weighed nine pounds, 11 ounces, because I was three weeks beyond my due date. My daddy said, why did you let her go so long? The doctor said, I thought she would go into labor. My daddy said, I could have told you months ago she was not, <laughs> she was not gonna do that. So there. Now you know the truth about me, and now you know what's been wrong these years. So I might have been raised to be a princess. And do you know, there haven't been many times in my life that my princess resume was used or anybody wanted to see it. Because I thought I was a princess, I was ill-prepared for a real life. I would get upset when things didn't go my way or when I wouldn't get certain things that I felt like I deserved. The things that I prayed for, things that I thought I would die if I did not have. Things that I knew that God could make sure that I got. Seemed kind of silly and trivial today. I remember when I was in the ninth grade at Warren Central High School, I had just turned 15, and I thought I deserved a new car. Um, my uncle worked at Atwood's. I did not see the problem. Mr. Atwood was my daddy's best friend. I just didn't understand. So daddy puts me in a 1971 Chevrolet Impala that had mud grips on it for me to drive to Warren Central. Now, needless to say, I was probably one of five, one of, well, probably five out of 500 kids in my graduating class that even had a car on campus. But that was not quite good enough. I needed a new car. I deserved a new car. Another example, my high school boyfriend that broke my heart. I'm telling you, just broke it. Because I thought at the time that boy was my future husband. Now, I was all of 17 years old. So I was so mad at God because God could fix this. Where are you, God? Why are you not listening to me, God? Why have you abandoned me, God? God, if you could just do this one thing... I will always be happy, and I will always go to church, God, and I will always do what you ask of me. Have you ever been so desperate over something that 50 years later seems so trivial? In our gospel lesson today, it was a beautiful day, but storms, they came up quite quickly. And in our life, we know that these storms come quickly, too, to us, don't they? Life is going along great, and in the next minute, out of the blue, something happens. And it throws our life into complete and total chaos. In our church over the last few months, things have happened to you. Some that were good and that you desired, and some that have caused you great pain and suffering. Some of you have had good things, like the birth of a child. The birth of grandchildren, college and high school graduates, confirmation, new jobs, new homes, family vacations. Some of you, Scooter, have even retired. Praise. Some of you have suffered great loss, though, hadn't you? Like the death of a loved one, or a cancer diagnosis, or a miscarriage, job loss, the loss of a partner through dementia, a broken relationship. Good things and bad things. Some of these we would choose and some of them we try to avoid at all cost. Some of these things cause us so much joy. And some of these have caused us so much pain. But you know, God is present in both. Not just the stuff that feels good, but the stuff that felt awful. God was present and God was there for both of those things. God's love cannot be based on the things that make us feel good. We all face storms. Martin Luther preached a sermon on this. 
and I'd like to share a few of his thoughts with you. He says, if you want to be a Christian and you want to have the gospel, you must anticipate rough weather, for it's inevitable. And we know that, don't we? That the storms in life are inevitable. The disciples, they're in this boat and this storm just comes upon them. And Jesus is asleep. The disciples are scared. They're sinking. And they wake Jesus up with a question. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Teacher, do you not care? If we don't believe that God cares about us, then every storm is overwhelming. But if we truly believe that God cares for us, then there's no storm that is too great for us to handle. Another thing Luther said was, when you live in security, when you exercise your freedom, when you are free of danger, when you have no needs, then you may think that with free will you can do anything. But in time of need, where is your free will then? It's lost, and it fails you when it comes to the test. But faith stands, and faith seeks Christ. When the seas of life are calm for us, we don't need our faith, do we? We can live just fine without it. But what happens when life gets difficult? When storms overwhelm us, that's when we need our faith. But faith isn't something that you just put in your pocket and you pull it out when you need it, is it? <laughs> I like to think of faith as a muscle. And with muscles, you do things to strengthen them, don't you? So with daily prayer and Bible study, weekly worship, and service to other people, that's ways that we can keep our faith muscles strong so it's there when we need it. Luther said, even though Christ sleeps, Christ is in the boat. When distress strikes and Christ does not help immediately, no matter, just hold fast, do not waver, but firmly believe that Christ is with you in the boat, for in his own good time he helps. Our faith and our prayers can wake Jesus up when he's asleep in the boat. In the midst of the storm with the disciples, somebody finally, finally went and woke up Jesus when they were swamped. Isn't that the gift and the blessing of belonging to our church? We're all in the boat, but there's always somebody here who is going to think to wake Jesus up. That's why we need each other, why we need this community. Because when we are caught in the middle of storms, we might forget to wake Jesus up. But there's always somebody in this church, in these pews, that will do that for us. Our faith is made stronger by the presence of the disciples in this room and in this church. They pray for us, they hold us up, they hug us when we're crying, they love us. Luther closed his sermon by saying, if you wish to be a Christian, you will certainly experience trials. However, if you call upon Christ in your time of need, Christ will hear you. Christ will re rescue you and Christ will cause your trial to bear fruit and to great glory. For the present, every necessity is met, and later, eternal life will follow. And I read those words, and I know because of trials I've had that they have eventually bore good fruit. But when I'm in the midst of it, and I'm in that boat sinking, I forget sometimes. So I ask you this morning to call upon Christ for yourself, for your family, for our church and for our world. Christ will answer in Christ's time. Christ is with us always and Christ will not allow us to perish. And as a United Methodist, that's good news because may we be reminded today that Jesus is in this boat with us. Jesus cares for us and Jesus does not want us to perish.
The good news of the gospel is that one day the storms will end and the sea will be peaceful and calm. But until the storms, but until that time, the storms will come. And through it all, through it all, Jesus cares for us. And he gets in the boat with us. And this gives us peace in the midst of any storm. In closing, if you remember my old boyfriend story that broke my heart, have you ever heard the Garth Brooks song, I Thank God for Unanswered Prayers? <laughs> well, Rusty, I do thank God for unanswered prayers every day with you. He was not the one. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is our joy this morning to welcome the wonderful gift uh, to our church, Grace Appling McMillan, to come forward for baptism. Would her parents please bring her? Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. We present Grace Appling McMillan for baptism. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. I do. Will you nurture Grace Appling in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. I will. I will. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Gracie now before you in your care? God, we will proclaim good news. We live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Gracie with the community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her service to others. We will pray for her that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you
you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And I'm also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan River to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Bless this gift of water and Gracie who receives it. Wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Grace Appling Macmillan, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born of water and the Spirit, you may grow to be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, it is our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Brothers and sisters, this is your sister, Grace. Grace? That's Grace. All right. Say hello. Hello, church. Hello there. This is your new sister in Christ. This is Gracie. Say good morning. Say good morning. This is Grace. This is your new sister in Christ. This is Grace Appling Macmillan. Right, now, Grace, we're going over here and see some folks that might look like you. Okay? <laughs> Say, hello, Mom and Dad and brothers. This is the beautiful Gracie. You say hello? Say, I'm baptized now. <laughs> Hello, good morning. What a wonderful gift to Christ Church.
I commend Gracie to your love and your care. Do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. For I offer this blessing. Uh, I remind you that we have given you a candle that was lit from the Christ candle and it was burning while she was being baptized. Each year on the anniversary of her baptism, we ask you to light the candle to tell the story of her baptism and the wonderful gift of Christ's love to her. And now, may the God of all grace, who has called us into eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and in peace. Amen and amen. Each year at annual conference, uh, right before the closing worship service, uh, the resident bishop sets the appointments for the coming year. We are a United Methodist Church, and part of our tradition is itinerant ministry. All of us who are ordained elders in the church take the vow of itineracy and that we will, uh, under the guidance of the bishop and the cabinet, that we will go where we are sent. Our young friend, Reverend Brad Corbin, uh, is continuing to live into that call. He has been called to serve in a different location, and uh, we now take this time to officially say farewell to him. I thank you for the love and support you have shown me while I have ministered among you. I'm grateful for the ways my leadership has been accepted. I'm, I ask forgiveness for the mistakes I have made. As I leave, I carry with me all that I have learned here. We receive your thankfulness, offer forgiveness, and accept that you now lead in the ministry of Shayla Road in the British United Methodist Churches. We express our gratitude for your time among us. We ask your forgiveness for our mistakes. I accept your gratitude and forgiveness, and I forgive you, trusting that our time together and our parting are pleasing to God. I release you from turning to me and depending on me. I encourage your continuing ministry here and will pray for you and your new pastors, Terry, Sue, and Reed. Let us pray together. Eternal God, whose steadfast love for us is from everlasting to everlasting, we give you thanks for cherished memories and we commend one another into your care as we move in new directions. As one in your love forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, uh, it is hard to say goodbye. This is your son. You raised him in this church. You were his Sunday school teacher his choir leaders, his friends, probably even a girlfriend or two. Oh. <laughs> but Brad, we send you forth knowing that this is always home, knowing that you are always welcome here. And we present to you a new Bible from the church. Preachers always need Bibles. <laughs> but I have to tell you, our friend Brad saw 
these Bibles when they came in for the confirmation class. And he said, oh, I really like that Bible. Uh, if there's an extra, I would really like that. So we made sure that he had one. And this is a gift from you, complete with the Apocrypha, because he's the kind of preacher that will study that. Okay? And so Brad, on behalf of First United Methodist Church, we present this with great love to you and know that our hearts are always with you. At the end of our service today, uh, you'll have a chance in a moment to, to meet Mary Kay, who will come and offer a mission moment. But Brad will be here at the front this morning, and uh, we invite you to come and to officially uh, send him forth and to show him some love, so to speak. Let us pray together. O oh Lord our God, send us into places that we could never imagine. And you connect us in ways that are beyond our uh, control or what we envision. And so we thank you for the shared ministry with our friend Brad. For God, we have seen the light of Christ in his life. We have seen the way that his particular gifts have been used in ministry. We pray for him. We pray for his wife, Kathleen, and for his daughter, Edith, for his mom and for his dad and for all who love him, that you will hold their hearts very closely. Oh God, we pray for our church. We pray that we might continue to be the place where young children like Gracie are brought. They are initiated into Christ's holy church. And just like Brad, and just like we will do with Gracie, we will nurture them. We will raise them up into the faith. And your spirit will guide us. Continue to love and celebrate with First United Methodist Church in Tupelo, Mississippi. For God, you are here, and you welcome all to this table. We pray these prayers this day in the name of the one who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
We return to you, O oh God, the gifts you have given, that this money and our lives might bear witness to the good news of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. You may be seated, but I'm going to welcome up Miss Mary Kay Jackson. It's been my pleasure to be the missions a pastor over the past year and see how much good you do with your resources. Uh, First United Methodist Church budgets around half a million dollars a year going to our internal missions, uh, missions, local missions in the community, the statewide ministry of the United Methodist Church, and the international ministries of the United Methodist Church, and even more, uh, in the ministries of, of Methodist, Methodist-connected ministries all over the world, and Mary Kay Jackson is one of those people whose ministries we support. Thank you, Brad. Good morning, church. It's such a privilege to be with you this morning. I'm here with my husband, Charlie. I couldn't do this by myself at all. But um, we first got connected with um, Tupelo in probably about 2008 or 2009. One of your sons, John Rogers, was living in Ghana and working in a village there and wanted to get them clean water to drink and I um, was connected through a mutual friend, Margaret Buell, and, and we were able to take filters into that village. And since then, you have faithfully supported us in our ministry and water projects in Ghana, and I appreciate that so much. When you bring water to a village, it changes the life of the village. And it's not just that they have water to drink. That's a huge thing. It means that little children like Gracie that we baptized today have a significantly higher chance of growing up into adulthood. One in four children in a, Ghana, in a village without safe water in northern Ghana does not live to age five. And when you bring water into their village, it, it um, changes the ratio so that only one in 10 of those children, 90% of the children will live and grow to adulthood. That's a huge impact on the life of a community. Um, but it also means that, that, church, that communities feel like they're not forgotten, that God remembers them, that, that, they brought, that he met their needs and brought water to their community. And I've seen churches planted in villages just because, um, and grow and be, be huge places of worship just because a well was drilled in that village. And then there's also just the, the individual impact. There was a young man, Sumaila, a little Muslim street kid in Bolgatanga in northern Ghana who started following me around and the Holy Spirit said just just befriend him and be nice to him. He had dropped out of high school and was not doing well. He, because of, of the generosity of, of friends like you who, who helped make my work possible and because people like us poured into his life, he was baptized in one of those boreholes that you helped to, to build and um, is now, he finished high school, he went on to university in Europe and is living there with a wife and son and it's just an amazing story of God's faithfulness. So thank you for all you have done over these many years to support us and to support water in Ghana. You've changed countless lives, many of whom stories we'll never even know. Thank you. Mary Kay, we don't have a lot of time. Mary Kay does so much work with pastors, mentoring pastors, so it's not doesn't even just be in there. So you can even go back to our earlier services to hear more from her. There's a great photo of that young man being baptized with water from one of the wells that we help pay for. It's just such a testimony to really meaningful work. Um, thank you so much. Let's stand and sing.
take one moment of celebration to share with you a very important announcement. You know that we have just returned from our annual conference, and I wanted to share with you that during that annual conference, two of our young adults, uh, Miss Emily Moat and Mr. Bennett Mize, were both elected as delegates to the general to the judicial conference of the United Methodist Church. They, along with uh, Steve McAlilly, will be traveling to the jurisdictional conference in July, representing Mississippi and the Mississippi Conference. So it is with great joy. So we are very, very thankful for that. Amen. Go out to be Christ's hands and feet, and do not be afraid. Creator of all that is upholds your life. Christ himself walks by your side. The Spirit gives you breath to speak God's grace and to sing God's praise. Amen. Friends, I'm going to ask Brad if he will remain here at the front of the church. Uh, grace and salt. Okay. <laughs> All right. And so uh, uh, find her at some point and hug, hug on her and love her. But just in case you've not had a chance to, uh, to, to officially say goodbye to, to Brad, we also want to invite Mary Kay and Charlie to come and to join here with Brad, and you'll have an opportunity to greet them. Let us go forth in peace. Mm -hmm.